Hi, I'm Jim O'Leary from the Maryland Science Center, and behind me is Science on a Sphere. This is a new projection technology developed by NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And it's a sphere suspended behind me. It's six foot diameter. And there are four projectors around the room that project onto the sphere and give us three-dimensional images of the Earth, planets in space, and different aspects of the Earth, oceans, atmosphere. We can see close to real-time things happening on the Earth, like thunderstorms and hurricanes volcanic eruptions, um, and uh, things that are happening in the news. So it's something we use for public programs, for school programs, and it really brings science uh, to our audiences in a very different kind of environment. So on the sphere, we have a, a selection of literally hundreds of different data sets. These are images taken by NASA satellites, by NOAA satellites orbiting the Earth. Uh, they're also taken by satellites that have gone on to visit the planets, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So we have a whole set of data sets from the planets in our solar system as well. One of the more interesting ones that we use a lot is this particular one here. And this shows the Earth at night. These are the night lights of Earth as seen from space. So what we can do is, is uh, turn the Earth in different ways and show where the, the, the lights of Earth shine in space. And this is compiled from literally, I think it's 300 separate images from a uh, meteorological satellite program. And what it shows are all the populated places on the planet. So you can see the eastern seaboard of the United States. You can pick out Baltimore and Washington. You can see the island of Puerto Rico, which is uh, brightly lit up. And even crisscrossing the United States, you can see lines connecting the cities. And these are actually the interstate highways and all the lights that border the interstate highways. So as we go through the different countries, Japan is brightly lit, South Korea, Israel, you can see lights along the Nile River. So it's a pretty dramatic set of uh, images that shows us how the Earth is developed by human activity. We also have a, a number of data sets that take us beyond the Earth into the solar system. So this is the sun and see, seen in a certain uh, uh, wavelength of, of light. This is the X-ray portion of, of the spectrum. So we wouldn't see the sun like this if we could look at it, which you can't do anyway because that's not safe. But when we look at it in the X-ray part of the spectrum, we see some of these storms, the explosions that are happening on the surface of the sun. We can also take us uh, take visitors uh, to other parts of the solar system. So when we look at um, our closest neighbor in space, the moon, we see the moon that we're familiar with in, uh, in the night sky. So as it rotates here, and the moon does do that, it rotates on a daily basis and it also orbits the Earth, but it always keeps the same face toward us. So the face that's coming into view right now, pretty much right there, is the, is the face of the moon that we see from Earth with the large dark areas that we call the maria or the seas and the, the lighter areas that are the highlands with a lot of craters. But as the moon rotates, one of the things we can notice here is that just now coming into view is that part of the moon that we can't see from Earth. Since that part of the moon keeps its uh, side faced away from us as it moves around the Earth, this part of the moon has day and night just like the rest of the moon does and the Earth does, but we can't see it. And as we turn the moon around and as it rotates, we can notice and we show our visitors this how the moon is uh, very, very different on the far side that it is on the near side facing us. So it talks about, we can talk about how the moon has evolved and why the moon looks different on the near side and the far side. One of the more interesting places to, to look at is Mars because we've been, we've spent many probes to Mars and we often think of Mars as a place where there could be signs of life. Perhaps microbes uh, live there today or there could be fossils of life that we found from, from uh, past Mars. These are things we want to investigate and find out. We haven't found any of that yet, but we do know that Mars has a history that had an awful lot of water on it in the past, and the, the Explorer spacecraft that are there now, the two rovers on the surface, have discovered evidence of lots of water in Mars past. There were lakes or shallow seas that, that covered a lot of the Martian surface. If we move on through the solar system, we come to the largest planet in the solar system, that's Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter is completely covered with clouds, so everything you're looking at here are the clouds of, of Jupiter's very thick atmosphere. Um, and the clouds go down for thousands and thousands of miles, so a very different planet than planet Earth. And one of the things coming into view right now is that what we call the Great Red Spot, the kind of orange reddish oval that's like a giant storm on the planet. It's been visible for more than 300 years, and it's almost like a giant hurricane in the fact that it turns like a hurricane does here on Earth with very, very high winds. One planet that's perhaps not so recognizable when we look at it um, in, in different colors is Jupiter itself. This is an image from the New Horizons spacecraft, which was uh, manufactured, built, and it's managed here in Maryland at Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory. It's on its way to Pluto. And as it passed by Jupiter, it took images of uh, the planet uh, Jupiter, which allows us to see Jupiter on an ongoing basis. 
So Science on a Sphere runs uh, all the time. The Maryland Science Center is open. Most of the day it's running on an auto loop, which has a number of programs with uh, pre-recorded scripts associated with them. And then three to four times a day, we have live programs that our staff presents that are 20 to 30 minutes long, and they're on different Earth and space science topics. So make sure when you come visit the Maryland Science Center, check out Science on a Sphere on the second floor right near the Davis Planetarium and Space Link.